All right, we're back at Mummert Machine and uh, Mummert Y Block, MMAD, all that good stuff. But we're on uh, video two of our porting basics. And uh, we're going to be all over the place in this video, so you guys might want to uh, get some popcorn. But uh, we're going to start here at some porting basics. And uh, one of the things we like to do before you ever start your project is figure out how big is one cylinder in your engine. And what RPM do you want to make your peak horsepower at? Okay. That's just one of the first things you got to, you have to kind of set those guidelines. How big is your engine and where do you want it to run? Now, this dimension here is something that most beginning cylinder head porters don't know is that there has to be, there has to be a north. There has to be something that you're basing your porting and your ideology off of. So that's usually the smallest point in the port. And that's something that you always want to keep sight of. The port can be bigger than that in places. It can be, but you don't want to get smaller than that. You know, you want to funnel everything to that point and then gently fade away from that point. And what I do to find the choke point is I go to this guy here. These uh, Wallace racing calculators, they have a lot of cool stuff. You should go check them out. But uh, if you use this link, wallaceracing.com backslash choke point uh, space hyphen whatever that is, rpm.php, um, it'll take you right there. If you go on to his list, you can also, um, you, it's a finding choke points by RPM. So, uh, and it'll give you a real basic thing you know the example is uh it'll want to know your bore it'll want to know your stroke it'll want to know our, your rpm and then it's going to spit out this number so this number isn't necessarily the firmness of the earth but it is a number that you you do want to pay attention to you want to make sure that you know if you drift away from here that you, it's not too far Especially if you're a beginner, okay? Because this is sort of where the energy in your port is going to be. Um, so, for this little project, for this 2800, he's given us a 1.36. So, we talked about this the other day. You know, map out your head. Make your quick drawing. Um, this will tell you, basically, is your head suitable for what you're doing, Okay. So, you know, if you measure out the head and every spot in the port is significantly bigger than that, then the head may be really bigger than your project needs. Um, like we set a little rule the other day, we didn't want to take much more than the 60 thousandths off any wall. So if you find a head and let's say the head's kind of small and you find the smallest part in that head and let's say you add 60 thousandths all the way around like right like you're willing to take 60 thousandths off of every wall and you can't get to your calculated number that head might just be too small you know you might just figure out you're going to work too hard and possibly put a hole in it trying to get to where you want to go so um once you lay out your port um, we put these numbers up in the other video, you know, the port opening was 1.58, the push rod was 142, the short turn was 130, it got even smaller than that around the guide boss, and then the throat was up around 139. So, I circled this region as where that number would generally be, and I know that the 142 is bigger than the 139, but um this head stock starts out with a very small throat like 85 percent so um i knew that that was going to be coming up so that dimension and i got down here pretty small let's see i need you know if we blow that uh throat open to 89 percent we're going to end up at 1.53 so you know i kind of figured that that area was going to start getting pretty big pretty quick so somewhere between the port the push rod and the short turn 
is where the smallest part of our port for this 2800 project is going to be. Now, um, as far as throats go, 87 to 89% cast iron uh, street stuff, I think that throat percentage on the intake is good. Um, on the exhaust, 86 to 87. So it's really simple. When you talk about throat percentage, it's a diameter to diameter relationship. Okay, it's not an area relationship. It's about um, looking at the two diameters so you have an understanding of what sort of general radius your valve job will have as it arcs from the combustion chamber toward the bowl. Okay, and you just figure that out by taking your valve diameter and multiplying it by your average there, 0.88. For an intake or on the exhaust your valve diameter times 0.87 that's going to be your throat diameter um, and then for a quick reference 100 cfm through one square inch is 240 feet per second okay and that's going to come into play we're going to do some math later but it gives you an idea um, you know sort of how big the head is you know because there's going to be some horsepower to airflow uh, ratios that you'll want to look at and but it's just always a good idea you know to sort of understand that and then you can multiply that up or down so for example if you have 158 cfm going through 1.58 inches um, you'll be at 240 feet a second and I really like 240 feet a second at the port opening. And that's just what this head happens to be stock. So until we reach 158 CFM, there's no reason to make the port opening any bigger. Okay. Now, as we get into this port, somewhere it's nice to get up close to 300 feet a second. You know, somewhere in your port. Now, really racy ports real straight elevated ports they'll be a lot faster than that but with this low old school iron if you can get anywhere near 300 feet a second you're doing pretty good so we go down um, another basic rule is as you're porting on your head only grind on one wall at a time um, it's good to do that because you want to have a reference as to how much you're taking off so if the one side stays original you can really measure how much you're taking off uh, some guys like to go in there and they try to like to make everything look kind of pretty so they feel like they're getting somewhere but then it's hard to go back and know how much you've taken off of any one wall because all the walls have material taken off them okay so always make sure that your grinder bits you're using um are a proper radius for the corners of the head you know a lot of your small block iron this little v6 like three eighths and half inch cutters those work pretty well like if you work on a big block chevy or something those could be small you definitely probably want a five eighths uh, size cutter if you're working on something big but uh always remember the better prep you do the better your results are going to be all right now i had one more rule i was going to throw in there and it's important i'm going to think of it all right so we've got some uh information here but when we left off the other day uh we were at the black line we were about 140 cfm and um we kind of kept looking at the uh port and listening to it and decided that we wanted to make a little change to the valve so um, all we did on the next test was take the sharp lip off the valve so we figured out the valve had a 20 degree tulip and we just set the grinder up and knocked that edge off and then in red you know you can see it definitely started coming up the hill faster and uh, held the peak number out a little longer and then after that let's see what we did here we decided to look at the valve job 
So we went to a nice four angle valve job and it started to come up the hill even faster. But what we started to figure out is every time it gets near 150 CFM, no wait, sorry. Yeah, sorry, okay. Once it started getting around 150 CFM, it starts, you know, the faster you get there, the faster it was starting to get into trouble. So we're like, okay. Um, so we started to play with it some more. And uh, let's see here, I'll bring up some more stuff. You have to bear with me, I gotta kind of sort through this. Um, what do we do here? Let's see. Edit, details, highlight, test. Okay, so what we figured out, and I'm going to go over there and I'm going to show you. We figured out that the guide boss was really getting in our way. That that was, it was probably smaller than we thought and it just happened to be right in the way. So we shortened the guide boss 150 thousandths with a three quarter inch uh, diameter cutter and then we rounded it off. And you can see from that, you know, that it not only got up and held a little more flow but it also started to try to recover and that was a pretty interesting um, yeah, learning curve right there so we kept playing with it and then we you know we kept cutting it a little more and a little more and you're gonna see out at the end it just kept trying to recover and recover um, not fall off as bad so the guide boss is definitely a problem on this head I think uh, we cut it down a quarter of an inch is where we stopped so this port because it's the really crooked one in this head is uh, really hard to measure it's really hard to get in there and measure so for this crooked port and for you wide block guys you should be paying attention to um, this stuff comes from Michaels and this is for making silicone port molds and this stuff is a saver back in the day we used to use this blue uh, colored silicone and this stuff was really expensive and it took a long time to set up like overnight this stuff here is magical um, I think it makes better molds and it only has 25 minute cure time okay so when you're working on a port that's really hard to get in and measure, um, making one of these is really a good thing. And you could see, if you look at that guide boss, and taking into account, this mold was taken after our video. So the port had some mods here. This guide boss is shaped already. This is, uh, this has been streamlined over stock. And you can just see how invasive this thing is. But uh, you can also see the really sharp corner of it, the uh, roof line there. But uh, yeah, this here was what led us to start working on the guide boss even harder than we already had, you know, to actually start taking it serious. So this is our second mold. And I think you can kind of see, you know, you can see where we shortened the guide boss in there. But you can also see where we started to actually shape the guide boss and start trying to bring it in and around the guide. Now, we are not taking off or trying to dig down to these most extremes because the port is too big there. Okay, you don't want to make a bad area worse what we, you can see is we're trying to work in and around that area but not dig down and dig bigger holes okay so you look at that so here's where we started so you can kind of see some of that evolution on the flow gains out there and we're beyond this right now um I don't know how much information you guys want to take in at one time, but I thought I would just show you guys. This is kind of the head in its current form right now. I'm going to try to get this light somewhere that's not ridiculous. But you can kind of see 
what effort's been taken on this guide boss to not only shorten it down, but to minimalize it, you know, and then start bringing it back together, you know, into a nice wing on the post side of the guide. So this is what, what stock looks like, okay? That's just to give you a good example. Bear with the light again. But this is where we are. We're 250 thousandths down. And we're significantly thinning and profiling. Um, this is the four angle valve job. Let me get in on that. This is... Uh, a 75, 60, 40, 35. It's one of our just basic Y block cutters that we use. And it really made this head take off. Now, that being said, I guys, you gotta take this. Um, this head is seriously unshrouded and it makes this head get really active really quick. Okay, this head, um, it has a tendency to want to start flowing a lot really fast, kind of abnormal. So this whole porting exercise with this cologne head is going to be short turn, guide boss, and almost dumbing down the valve job. This valve job is almost too good, okay? It's making the head try to overrun itself too fast and... What I, one thing I wanted to show you is when you hold this valve, this is the stock valve. That's what we're using right now. Okay, you can see how fast it falls away on the short turn side. It's got a full 5 sixteenths of an inch all the way around. This is difficult to deal with because the head wants to gain flow almost too fast. And it makes your discharge coefficient look really strange. Okay, imagine almost being tugged on like it it really comes on real fast but when it levels off it levels off really hard some of your more modern uh, combustion chambers will have much more gradual rates of fall away trying to control how fast the airflow moves per each increment okay you don't have anything like that on this head. So we'll talk about this because we're going to come back for a third video and we're going to start talking about some math stuff. But we're going to, you know, delve into the 2.9 valve. We've already run a 2.9 size valve. And what I did once I started seeing what was going on is if you, that's a lap mark all the way up there. Okay. I'm not putting it anywhere near the edge intentionally to try to slow this head down and you'll see what happened but this head actually kind of responded to that flowed its best number and held on a lift point longer so we'll go into that later but this head is going to be an exercise in moderation in some places and with the guide boss, you got to get a little extreme, but with the combustion chamber and the valve job, you almost don't want to pull out every trick in the book. Okay. So anyway, I'm going to, I'm, we're doing a lot on this and it's, uh, and we're working on manifolds too. So I'm going to try to do the best I can, but stay with us on this thing. We've got more information with it. We're messing with it more. There's potential in this little head, guys. Like, this thing, I think, has the ability to run, but it's not like a lot of other heads have messed with, so we got to uh, get our head around this one, but there's something here. So, anyway, for John, Jeff, Mummer Y Block, have a good one. Hit like, subscribe, go to the website, follow our little 2.8 project. Have a good one, guys.